Automation is transforming entire sectors of the economy. Some experts predict the rise of intelligent machines will spawn mass unemployment by 2050, with jobs in transport and admin at the highest risk. But advances in big data and AI have put automation on course to impact even the most creative industries. Music, film and TV have already used the power of algorithms to concept and execute major productions. And there are fears in advertising that automation may threaten pillars of the trade, like copywriting, design and creative direction. However, some in Adland have faced up to AI and invested in its creative potential. This documentary takes a look at the pioneers embracing the automation of creativity. AI CD is an artificial intelligence that can direct what sort of TVC to create for specific clients. It's designed to input the creative brief and on the desktop we can type in the creative brief like your industry and your communication goal and your claim. It's based on a thousand TV commercial database. Once you submit um, the algorithm and the database will come up with the uh, best direction for that specific um, creative brief. The first account AICD work is Corets Mintab, which is for Mondelez Japan. We are working on Corets project and we have received new brief. Today we are going to put new creative brief to the AICD and see what what's what he says and we're going to present it to the client later on. Now we have AICD beta's creative direction so we're going to go to client and we are going to present his direction. We have created this special box with padding. <laughs> We want to treat AICD as if it's like normal creative director and it's important to have a creative director be in the meeting um, internally and externally. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> スイッチが入っ歌を印象付けて解放を感じさせろ。いかがですかね。そうですね。えっと、正直あの想像以上に、え、シーンを作って、ディレクションだと思いました。ま、ただちょっと言葉は、あの、抽象的な部分もあるかなとは、ま、思
目見た時は、えー、ちょっとやっぱびっくりしてあの正直なんだこれって思ったんですね。であのまあそれはそのある意味僕らはおそらくこういうディレクションはしないだろうっていうものだったりもするのでそれはまあ驚くと同時にああこういうやり方はあるのかないのかちょっと僕にはわからない部分もあったんですけど。New creative people they don't have to study the past they no need because there is an AI so if you put okay something the 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 keyword the AI CD can re reply so the the knowledge is replaced by AI but creativity cannot be replaced by AI because AI is they are coming from the past. So I think it's a not a not a tough and dark future, but automation will be one of the new way of expression for creative people. If someone has an idea, and if they can, he can use automation technology. He can explore a lot of different way of expression using automation, data, and algorithms and AI. Is not a, just an idea vending machine, so you cannot get any new ideas from them automatically. It's like a new tool, like a pencil or、um, paper, something like that. I mean, the, the blurring between arts and, and, and technology that was the assignment. So that was basically how do you how do you merge these two or, or Let them work together, or that, that was the brief basically. But somehow, <clears throat> when, we got, when we had the idea, it felt that we had something that made these things into one thing.、Uh, so it didn't feel like technology anymore. It felt like actually these two things are coming together in a way that, that we haven't seen before. When we started our thinking, we actually started from, from the technology. So, what is available?、Uh, um, what can technology give us as far as an edge within this domain? The reason why we chose Rembrandt,、uh, or to bring to life Rembrandt, is、uh, he's one of the best documented painters in the world. So, if you need to create something out of historic material, then you need data, you need information, and you need vast amounts of them. So,、uh, that's what we found in Rembrandt. So when we had the idea of the next Rembrandt, that then we had done the easy, the easy bit. I mean, bringing it to life and and teaching a computer to think and act like Rembrandt is actually、um, where a big part of the challenge is, as well as as bringing it to life、uh, on a 3D printer. There were four steps in this process. One was gathering the data, so get all the information that you can on the 346 paintings that are attributed to him. Second step was selecting the subject. So we're going to paint something. What are we going to paint? If you look at what he paints, portraits are by far the biggest portion of his work. And then we came to the, the third step, which was generating the features. So we fed a computer all the right eyes. So we started with the right eyes of all these portraits, and then taught a computer: this is how Rembrandt paints right eyes. Now make a new one. We did that for the right eye, left eye, nose, all the different uh, uh, facial features. So actually, it is a combination of facial features. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Teaching the algorithms how to think and act like Rembrandt was actually much like a father teaching his kid how to ride a bike. The first time he falls flat on his nose, and then you teach him to grab the steering wheel and. And keep it steady, and then you push him a bit. And we would also go in the wrong direction, and then be、uh, redirected by the experts. What was interesting about that was that that it would render overnight. So we would come in in the morning and just see the the the, the fruits of of its labor,、um, and see facial hair appear and and see wrinkles appear. So that was that was actually quite interesting. But we've also had some difficult mornings as well. And the fourth step was actually bringing it to life. So then you have your 2D image, but how do you apply height in the way that Rembrandt would? So how would you? How do you recreate brush strokes? And we actually used high-resolution 3D scans from the Technical University of Delft to recreate these brush strokes 
by using x-ray scans of paintings to uh, teach a computer how to apply height and where to apply height uh, like Rembrandt would and then just print it. You could think about uh, the limitations that we, that we are aware of now that we weren't aware of but I'd like to think about the endless possibilities that it brings us and the limitations that it takes away in our thinking because to me it's about the inspiration that it brings that, that basically anything is possible much more so than the limitations that they, they were all overcome so there are no limitations. Behind campaign came out because we were essentially looking to do something with AI and we just really wanted to make an AI ad. Essentially we had a poster sat in a bus shelter and it had essentially a really simple bank of images that it could pick from and it had a load of copy that it could choose from and it was for a fake coffee brand. So essentially it created a fake coffee ad. So there was a PC essentially built into the, to the screen and it was connected to a Kinect sensor. So that had the ability to use uh, facial recognition and facial tracking software to look at people that are engaging with it and to make a decision based on an algorithm we created about how engaged they were. And what it did is it learned over time. So the more people looked at a certain set of images and a certain set of copy, it would take that and go, that's okay, that's good. And then it would evolve and try and create a slightly better version of that. So it used a genetic algorithm. So essentially it continued to learn um, a bit, a really a bit like survival of the fittest is the best way of describing it. You know, the, the, the ads that people most engage with are the ones that, that carried on and then were allowed to reproduce with, with new ads and other ads. But what it also did is even though when it got to a certain point, so it would never get to a, this is the best ad, this is the best variant. What it would always do is it would always leap back and try a different evolutionary path to see if it could continually better. And I think from, a, from an advertising world where so focused on campaign driven to focus on a more programmatic and program based approach, I think is a, is a much more interesting world to be in. Um, I think for the agency, uh, it started off as terror for the creatives and I think the reality is it's now a lot less scary. But what they did realise, and we thought this was fascinating, what they did really tack onto was that actually could it potentially automate some of the uh, arguably more mundane tasks of you know an enlarged scope of work and multiple channels to, to run an idea off and so some of the creatives have been really interested in how can we develop it so once they've got a big idea how do you spit that out over lots and lots of channels so that we can then take those ideas to clients much faster than we might have been able to do and much cheaper and produce them. Maybe there's some there's still some fear coming out of science fiction movies about uh, ideas of what could happen in the future I think in reality we're, we're less and less inclined to think about the future future and more inclined to think about tomorrow or next week or because stuff is happening so fast. So we've seen programmatic becoming pervasive across all of uh, the different businesses. Creativity is um, having to catch up and this is where AI is really, really focusing now. With any new technological sort of change, the first thing people think about is themselves. They think about the impact it's going to have on them. And it's no different in the creative industry as it, it, as it was in the media industry. Automation might replace some kind of jobs, some kind of people, but it means that we can do other things more. And I believe there are many things we can do, only people can do. A part of creativity which is not automated is, uh, I believe, emotion. We as humans, we can pick up by free will the pattern that we want to make a variation from, right? So association has a broader sense. When it comes to computer, you need to train the computer to pick up patterns. So that small limitation makes a big difference between what a machine creativity is and what a human creativity is. Probably AICD will support creative director, but cannot be replaced. Now, as we're moving into the sort of the creative era of programmatic, we should see creative directors, data technologists, and the machine working hand in hand together to really start making a difference. And that's when the new era of creativity is gonna come in. For the last 10 or 15 years, we've approached digital from an analog basis. Let's approach creativity from a digital basis and really use that as a way to create change for the next 20 years.
what does it do to someone when you're you're 15 years old and almost anything you can do you can get a positive response to should I enjoy my time in, you know, in real life, in person right now, and then take a picture after? Or should I take a picture and send it to 100,000 of my followers so we can all enjoy this together? How do we as a culture begin to address boys' and girls' needs for deep connection and not see...